Since your thyroid issues began, have you found that you struggle more with exercise? If so, you are definitely not alone. And there is some science behind this that we're going to cover today. Maybe you found that you're more prone to symptom flare-ups. Maybe what you used to do doesn't work for you anymore. Maybe you found that you're not able to exercise really at all anymore. Well, it's very crucial for us to stay active and get regular physical movement, there is a bit more to it for us as thyroid thrivers. Sometimes that conventional wisdom backfires when it's applied to those of us with thyroid or autoimmune conditions. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Hello, thyroid drivers. Welcome back to another episode of Thyroid Healthy Bites, a weekly podcast dedicated to helping you live well and eat well so you can feel well. I'm Ginny Mahar, your host and the face behind the apron at hypothyroidchef.com. All right, it's 2022. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful holiday and are enjoying the joy and enthusiasm that comes from a new year and having new health goals and resolutions. Uh, In my last episode, we talked about how to set smarter New Year's resolutions that will actually stick. So if you missed that, definitely go back and listen to that one. But I know so many of us are on the exercise wagon as the new year has rolled around. And I wanted to make sure we cover this on thyroid healthy bites because this is a big topic for thyroid thrivers. When we exercise, we expect and want it to do our bodies more good than harm, but there are some things that we do need to keep in mind and be aware of as thyroid drivers when it comes to exercise. We don't want to undermine our health goals here. So in today's episode, we're going to cover kind of the basics of thyroid friendly exercise with my top five exercise tips for thyroid drivers. Again, this applies to anyone with thyroid issues, whether you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, Graves, maybe you're a thyroid cancer survivor, or maybe you don't have a thyroid. Now, while I'm obviously not a doctor or a physiology expert, I have interviewed and worked with several leading experts in the field of thyroid and autoimmune friendly exercise. So this information is kind of a melange from several of them. If you're ready now, though, to dive deeper, get moving, learn more, you want to kind of go deeper on this, head on over to my thyroid friendly workout kit. This is an amazing, in depth, thyroid friendly exercise bundle that includes a 20 page guide, a 28 day exercise plan, an exercise tracker, and 20 awesome thyroid friendly workout videos from those amazing experts. And this is going to get you off the couch and feeling better instantly, and also just empowered and informed as a thyroid thriver, as far as how to exercise safely and effectively. And all of it can be done at home with minimal equipment. So, you know, there's really a lot of ground to cover here around thyroid healthy exercise or thyroid friendly exercise, more than we really have time for in one little podcast episode but the workout kit is going to lay it all out for you. And because so many of us are trying to exercise more as part of our healthy new year's resolutions, I'm giving you a special new year's gift or just a thank you for listening to thyroid healthy bites. Whenever you happen to find this episode, I've got a 20% off coupon for you that you can apply to the thyroid friendly workout kit. That code is work it 20. So just go to hypothyroidchef.com slash workout, and you can learn more about the kit and get 20% off. So again, work it 20 is the discount code, and I'll put the link for the workout kit in the show notes below. All right, let's dive in. First, let's begin at the beginning. What is thyroid friendly exercise? What does that mean? Well, I think one of the simplest ways to define this is Thyroid friendly exercises, any fitness routine that provides you with the benefits of exercise and general fitness without resulting in injury, further illness, or worsening symptoms. And 
Thyroid friendly exercise is a lot like thyroid friendly eating in that it's all about finding what works and what doesn't work for you. With exercise, sometimes less truly is more, but as always, it really depends on the individual. Some things to keep in mind, if you're overtaxing your adrenals, if you're finding yourself extremely fatigued for days or even weeks after an intense workout, if you're struggling with things like joint pain or you're even gaining weight in spite of eating less and exercising more, your thyroid might be asking you to kind of reevaluate your workout routine. So as thyroid thrivers, it's important to be mindful of how we exercise. We all have unique needs, ability levels, and health situations, but there really are a couple of universal guidelines here. First is you need to listen to and carefully track the feedback your body gives you about exercise. And second is you want to find that personal sweet spot that helps you stay strong and fit without overdoing it. So just because an expert says intense cardio might be bad for thyroid patients doesn't necessarily mean that you need to quit doing cardio if it's working for you and helping you feel great. Along the same lines, Avoid comparison. If your Hashimoto's friend swears by her bar or boot camp or spin bike workouts to stay trim, that doesn't mean necessarily that the same will be true for you. So as in all things, listen to, learn from, and honor thyself. Now that we've got the general idea out of the way, let's zoom in on these top five tips for thyroid-friendly exercise. Tip number one keep moving. Now, I think one of the greatest pitfalls that can happen when we start to get informed is we get information paralysis, where we get so overwhelmed with what we've learned that we kind of become afraid to do anything. And we get sort of angsty about it. It's kind of like thyroid healthy eating. You know, we become informed by experts, most of them well-meaning who use words maybe like always and never. And then we start to question our current choices. Do I need to quit running? Is my spin bike making me fat? Is yoga? Why my hips hurt? It's normal to go through this process and it is part of the process. Sometimes we might discover that we need to make some changes. What we thought was good for us maybe isn't serving us anymore. And those discoveries can be a little bit difficult to swallow and also take some effort to course correct. But the key is to not freak out, just stay curious, keep listening to your body, keep tweaking your routine, keep putting one foot in front of the other, and above all, stay active. So unless your doctor has told you not to exercise, and you should certainly consult with them first, moving your body is essential to your health. It's as essential as nutrient-dense food and quality sleep. It boosts our happy hormones. It boosts our mood. It boosts our bone density. And exercise has a laundry list of other positives like decreased risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes. You know, as thyroid thrivers, we already have enough issues standing in the way of exercise, like slowed metabolism, increased fatigue, joint pain, low mood, and things like that. So just like we need to not become afraid to eat when we start learning about certain foods that may or may not agree with us as thyroid patients, it's also important to not become afraid to exercise when we start learning about maybe certain types of exercise that may or may not be serving us as thyroid patients. It's all about finding what works for you and your beautiful, unique self. So take a deep breath and keep moving unless otherwise directed. All right, tip number two, sometimes less really is more. In other words, don't overdo it. One particular mindset shift that we can really benefit from when it comes to thyroid-friendly exercise is letting go of some outdated ideas like no pain, no gain, or eat less and exercise more. That conventional wisdom can often backfire when it's applied to those of us with thyroid, autoimmune, hormonal, or adrenal issues. 
Now, why is pushing harder and exercising more a problem for us? Well, according to functional diagnostic nutritionist, Catherine Watkins, what many people don't realize is that too much exercise can actually be harmful. Exercising too frequently, too intensely, or for too long can push the body's stress response past its limits. And that can lead to this sort of cascade of reactions that can be detrimental to our health. Now, this is true for everyone, but it's especially true if you're already dealing with a thyroid condition. These conditions are aggravated by stress. And in the case of an autoimmune thyroid condition, the addition of too much exercise can send the immune system into overdrive, and that can cause an autoimmune flare. So really pay attention to how your body responds following exercise and notice any indications that you might need to tweak things. What are some signs that you might be overdoing it on exercise? Uh, You may find that you are unable to complete your workouts. You might find that your endurance instead of increasing is decreasing with workouts. Maybe you feel exhausted or need to nap after exercise. You might even feel faint or lightheaded with exercise. And sometimes we can experience things like fever, chills, body aches, vertigo, or joint inflammation following workouts. I've experienced that last one personally. Actually, I've I've experienced most of those personally from overdoing it because I love to play. I love to work out. I love to stay active. And there's so many things I like to do that are kind of high intensity. And I've had to really um, learn what my body needs to be able to continue doing the things I enjoy, like mountain biking, for example. When I was younger, I might be able to just hop on my bike and go for a ride. Now I need to train more. So a couple winters ago, I remember our local ski area, the um, one of the lifts that served like the top of the mountain was broken. And that's where we usually ski. And my husband and I went up there one day and we took our backcountry gear like everybody else. And we skinned our way up to the top of the mountain. So this is really intense cardio. It's not like a hike where you're you know, going on switchbacks. You're going straight up a mountain with your ski gear on, you know, you're breathing super hard. Then you're skiing down. You know, it was, it was a big day. And although I had been active, it was way higher intensity than I do on a normal basis. And when I got home that night, I totally had vertigo and I was laid out for like the next two or three days. My body told me really clearly that was too much. That was too hard. If you're going to do that, you need to like train a little harder or, you know, maybe let's just keep it a little bit lower intensity. So, so that's just an example of how our bodies let us know when we've gone too far. And really the bottom line here is that exercise is stress. It's a source of stress on the body, but it's also a good example of how not all stress is bad stress. So when you're doing it in the proper amounts at the appropriate level for you, exercise is highly beneficial to our health. This is established, right? So we want to just try to keep the effects more positive than negative by keeping it in that range that is appropriate for us. How do we determine what that is? Well, according to Watkins, who's also a certified personal trainer and a Hashi's patient, she says you should feel energized and more or less really good 30 minutes after a workout. And if you can't bounce back or find that you have to take a nap, that's a pretty good indication you should dial it back. Your best guide, she says, is how you feel the next day. If you feel energetic and balanced with the same or slightly more energy than the day before, then you're probably on track. But if you feel drained and exhausted, you've probably overdone it a bit. So if this happens to you, you might need to reduce the length and intensity of your next workout or um, include some added recovery time. Now, this doesn't mean that you're not going to feel a little bit extra tired from working out or that you won't experience things like muscle soreness. I mean, these are the body's normal physiological responses to having a very active day. So it's not so much that we want to feel no ill effects. It's just that we want to feel mostly positive effects. 
I know I try to exercise three mornings a week. And on the days when I do, I always feel a little bit more energized throughout the day. I've learned that if I keep those workouts to 30 to 45 minutes and don't go super hardcore on it, that I feel great throughout the day. I can work. I'm not feeling super fatigued. If I go a little bit too far, I do kind of feel groggy. So that's how I've been able to experiment and find that sweet spot for me. Okay, tip number three, more strength, less cardio. According to Dr. Emily Kybert, who's the founder of Thyroid Strong, if you have an underactive thyroid, it's harder to maintain muscle mass. Hypothyroid myopathy or muscle weakness affects about 79% of us with hypothyroidism, 79%. So strength training really helps us build muscle or what Dr. Kybird calls the organ of longevity. Muscles, she says, are a major target for thyroid receptors. So in order to have good thyroid hormone turnover, we need to stimulate the muscles. So if you haven't already, it's a good idea to incorporate strength training into your exercise program. Strength training helps boost metabolism, and burn fat in addition to helping us feel and be stronger. It also improves bone density and hormonal health. So all good things. Now, strength training doesn't necessarily mean you have to lift super heavy weights, although you can work your way up to that. It's best to start by lifting light to moderate weights and incorporating other forms of resistance, like you can use body weight or resistance bands, and then work your way up. Now, what about cardio? Why should we be doing less cardio? Well, when done too much at too high of an intensity, excessive cardio can trigger a stress response, and that floods the body with stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. That can trigger a chain reaction that leads to increased symptoms. It can imbalance our blood sugar. It can trigger our bodies to store fat, or we can end up in an exercise induced autoimmune flare. So keep in mind, less cardio does not mean no cardio necessarily, but you may find that you do better by cutting back on the duration, intensity, or number of your cardio workouts. So incorporating extra recovery days or maybe trading some cardio days for strength days can all lead to more positive results. If you're suffering from a thyroid condition, you might also find that you benefit from a different type of cardio than what you've been doing. Things like high intensity interval training might be too much for you in the early stages, but you might find that you benefit from interval training at a lower intensity. If HIT feels like too much and you're feeling that exhaustion afterwards, look for medium intensity interval training workouts or even low intensity interval training. I've got both medium and low intensity interval training workouts included in the thyroid friendly workout kit. Tip number four, start slow and work your way up. So many things in terms of thyroid healthy living and eating are best served by baby steps. Smaller steps are not only more sustainable, but in the case of thyroid friendly exercise, they're often safer. The baby step approach can help us avoid injury, fatigue, and flare ups of other symptoms. Now, this is especially important for thyroid patients because we have an increased likelihood of some physical complications and other issues. That includes things like hypermobile joints, tissue laxity, joint pain and inflammation, tendinitis, knee pain is especially common amongst thyroid patients, and frozen shoulder, which I personally experienced and just went through last year. When you look at the numbers, there is a significantly increased risk for several of these physical complications. But the good news is it's easy to avoid them by starting slow and working your way up. Especially if you've been inactive, like totally sedentary, maybe you've even been bedridden for a long time, you wanna start really, really slow. Like just moving around more can be helpful. 
And then once you've effectively become a little bit more mobile and pain-free, you can begin adding restorative workouts and then follow that with strength training workouts and eventually some cardio. That's what Watkins recommends, kind of going in that order. First, get mobile, then add restorative workouts, then strength training, and eventually cardio. That's kind of the, the gradual progression. So with each phase, of course, you want to remember to ease in and work your way up. With strength training, for example, you can increase the number of reps and sets and add more weight as you go. And you'll find that the body adapts really quickly. Like even in just a couple of weeks, you might find that you can add more weight or up your routine. And that's a really great sign that you are getting stronger. On the flip side, if you find that you're suddenly exhausted and brain fogged and generally worse off in pain, et cetera, pair back. Let yourself fully recover before trying again with a less intense or shorter routine. So why is this so important for thyroid patients? According to my friend and fitness expert, Deborah Atkinson, when you have a thyroid or autoimmune thyroid condition, what your body shows us from overdoing it with exercise is like an amplified version of what happens in the general population. It's just that you've got a more narrow road to drive down. You don't have the wiggle room necessarily that somebody else does. Now, those words I know can be somewhat disheartening, but in the case of those of us who have found that exercise isn't agreeing with us or what once worked for us no longer does, it's also a comfort to know that you are not alone. This is not out of the ordinary for thyroid patients. Deborah Atkinson echoes Watkins' advice that if you feel like you need to lay down and take a nap after a workout, that's a good indication that it's too much. And if that happens, you want to really practice self-care, self-love, self-compassion by pairing back and trying again. And just keep tweaking until your workouts make you feel better, not worse. It's really as simple as that. So that's how we find that Goldilocks exercise routine that isn't too much. It's not too little, but it's just right. Okay, so here's Deborah's advice for how to find your exercise sweet spot. Do not just plow through. Create a plan that has flexibility. Track your workouts and your body's response to the workouts. Remember to factor in other life stressors when planning your workouts. And then adjust the level, duration, and intensity of your workouts as needed. All right, I hope all of that makes sense. It's pretty simple stuff, and I hope this has encouraged you and empowered you with how to exercise safely and effectively so you can get those positive results that you're going for. There's so many benefits that exercising with a thyroid issue can provide. And really the overall takeaway is just to be more mindful about how we exercise. We really have to dial in and listen to the feedback of our bodies and then adjust accordingly. That's pretty much it. As Deborah Atkinson says, if we push too hard, it's like using the accelerator on your car with no gas in it. Pretty soon, you're going to run out. All right. I hope this has been helpful. And whatever your thyroid healthy New Year's resolutions are, I wish you the best of luck. You can read the full post for this episode at hypothyroidchef.com, and it includes some helpful resources for any of you who are ready to get active or stay active or up your game in a thyroid healthy way. So if you are ready, don't forget to check out my thyroid friendly workout kit. You can get 20% off that kit with the code WORKIT20. To find that, go to hypothyroidchef.com slash workout or you can find the link in the show notes. All right, Thyroid Thrivers, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Thyroid Healthy Bites. If you've enjoyed the show, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave a review. You taking that extra second to support my work helps so much and is so appreciated. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Jenny Mahart, wishing you the best of health. See you next time.